What's up, Airbnb Nation? I'm Danny, and I'm going to go through an overview of the new analytics dashboard under the performance tab in your Airbnb dashboard on desktop. This is not going to be found on mobile. Now, um, I have to applaud Airbnb. Good job, Airbnb. It's a step in the right direction for sure. It's good stuff, especially this conversion tab, which we're gonna go over first. There are some kinks to be worked out. There's some confusion as to what is and is not being measured that I'll go through here, but um, it's good stuff. I did a video a few weeks ago that was a critique of Airbnb. It was all this feedback that I had held up for three years waiting for the next Airbnb open to deliver it in person, and that opportunity never came. And so I created this video and it has a bunch of stuff and I don't know if Airbnb watched it or not, but things have already changed. For example, in the app, they've, they've made some changes in the app based directly on feedback that I gave in that video. And this is another example. I'll link that video up here for you to watch if you have some interest. As I mentioned, the best tab here is conversion. And I would say, you know, I am basically going through this live with you right now. However, I have already recorded this entire video, uh, but my phone ran out of battery. I'm recording now. I record on my phone and it ran out of um, battery and so it lost the whole video. So I've went over this once, so I know a little bit. So it'll be a more efficient video. It's like throwing away your essay and writing it from scratch. It almost always comes out better. So let's jump into it. Um, this conversion rate, as I mentioned, this is the most important tab. This is full of useful information. Overall, I'm gonna explain what's going on here. 0 0.20 seems low. And they used to give you this information, but you just didn't know what it meant. How did it compare with other people? It seems low. Am I doing good? Am I doing bad? You would ask other people and they would, all, they would always have about 0.2 as well. The reason why, now we know, is because this is taking into consideration everything, every search you're in or anything, how many of those people are actually booking, which is obviously gonna be a very small number. All of these tabs are gonna come with a chart down here so that you can see how you're doing as it relates to yourself the past previous 30 days or how it relates to your similar listings. Now it's nice to know that my listing is doing better than similar listings, but what is similar listings? So how do we compare listings? So I clicked on that and it does not tell you. It is very important to Airbnb if you're watching, we do need to know because what you think is a similar listing may or may not be a similar listing. Now, I should take a step back. If you don't see this performance tab, well, you're gonna have to activate hosting tools in your account. Now, how you do that? Well, let me take a step back. Let me go to Airbnb. They recently did a change in their design and it's confusing. And then you're gonna have this tab up top. So if you, if you have that tab, all is good. You can click performance and it'll bring you there. If you don't have that tab, then what you wanna do is you wanna to go to your account here, click your profile button in the upper right corner, and then click on professional hosting tools. This is where you can activate it. I already have it activated, but if you don't see that tab, then this is how you activate it. This tab is only gonna be shown on desktop. So what's, what's next here is first page search impression rate. Now what that measures is based on how many people who saw your listing saw it from the first page. So to give an example, if you have two listing views and one person saw it and clicked on it on the first page and one person saw it and clicked on it on the second page, well then this number would be 50%, kind of. When you read into this, they say that they count first page search impressions as the first 10 listings. On Airbnb, they have 20 listings per page. So keep that in mind for this statistic. The next one here is of those views on, on search, who clicked on your listing? Percentage of people who saw you in search to clicked on your listing. And the final one here is of those people who clicked on your listing, this is the most important one. Of those people who clicked on your listing, who booked? That's important. That's what I want to know. I'm not so much concerned about overall rate because if, if a guest sees me in search and doesn't click, that could mean one of two things. That could mean that I wasn't attractive enough or it could just simply mean that they're not interested. It's not a good fit. I think Airbnb thinks the video will be back shortly, but I promised Reishi and Luna they could say something. That their search presents the best listings for any FPG, future potential guest. As a perpetual FPG, I'm always looking and I'm always booking. Um, that's not always the case because a lot of hosts, they're just different standards of hosts. Some hosts don't fill out things that they need to that would preclude their listing from my search had I collected, uh, clicked a certain amenity. Anyways, if we, let's continue down here and see what's going on. So this, this is going to identify what's your lowest and highest performing listings. 
Now, one thing that I would be curious about that I could not find the answer to is what are we measuring here? On my Airbnb account, I have one listing on my account, but I'm also a co-host of many other listings. So are these numbers, and this is true for the whole dashboard, are these numbers of this one listing or of all the listings? I'm not sure. By the way, all of these tabs are also gonna have this opportunities section. Now, none of them for me, none of them are filled out, but you can assume in the future they will be filled out. This is the crux of the whole thing because a lot of people might look at this and be confused and say, okay, well, what do I do with this information? This is, you know, percentages and numbers, it's all confusing. All right, what are the actions you can take? This is what I do for my business. What are the, I simplify it down, I try to at least, what are the actions you can take? I can give you all the information you want, but what's the action you can take? That's the most important thing to improve your performance. So once that fills out, I'd be curious to know how specific they get. Booking lead time. Um, this is especially important with what I just mentioned. Is this for the one listing on my account or all of my listings? It's for all of my listings. My listings are in different places in the world. So it, it's tr tremendously useless, but that needs to be cleared up. Otherwise it looks the same. If we do returning guests. Now this is interesting. Returning guests are important for those people who book direct, those people with websites. This has gotten a lot of momentum as people have been um, upset with how Airbnb has handled the, the situation that we are in now. So they could be making a move into getting people to book direct. Maybe they say, hey, if you're a repeat guest at a listing, maybe you get, you know, you charge half the half the fee or whatever. I'm not sure. For me, it's it's not so useful and there's no information. But again, a lot of potential here and a huge step in the right direction. I'm very happy with Airbnb for doing this. Wish list additions. Now, wish list is interesting. Wish list is one of the only things Airbnb has come out and said, hey, wish list, the number of times your listing is saved matters for your search. They used to show that on your Airbnb listing, then they took it away. It's still not shown, but in the back end, at least you can see it. So we're looking for the last 30 days. We can see there's a little design issue as well. My mouse here is blocking the actual number. So my performance is low, much lower than my uh, my competition. So that's good to know. It's just a, it's just a scratch note. It's just the tip of the iceberg. There's no actionable advice uh, for me to do. So I want to know, you know, of my competition, well, what are they doing to get more wishlist saves? What are even the top 20%? doing to get wish list saves. Everybody has the information. If they provide the information and make it open, well, that it helps me improve myself. That helps the best improve themselves and, and there's continual improvement. Better for the host and the guests. But this is cool. So average 11 wish list saves for, for one or some of my listings. I wonder if I can see for, I can't see for forever, but the last 365 days, looks like I got 639. Similar listings. Okay, it looks like this view, it looks like I am doing much better than the similar listings. And as you know, we, we know what happened in March, April, May, 2020. So obviously less people are booking so much less reservations too. Let's go to occupancy and rates here. Occupancy rate is 87.2%. Um, I think we don't need the 0.2. I think just 87 is good <laughs> or 88. This is the same big question here though. As it relates to inconsistencies, you can see that I'm at a hundred, they're saying I'm at a hundred percent. I know that I'm not at a hundred percent and based on similar listings, but is this, again, is this just one listing? It can't just be one listing. If it wasn't, it wouldn't make any sense at all. Maybe it's my portfolio. Something to be cleared up. Average nights booked is 82. Something to consider is for the average occupancy rate, are we considering blocked days as booked or not? That that matters greatly, especially if you're using more, more than one platform or booking direct. Average unbooked nights in the last 30 days. Okay, average nights blocked in the last 30 days, but there's 154. So that means that must be for all of my portfolio and average check-ins that must be just per listing. So there's a little bit of confusion here, as you can tell. If we go down, they're just comparing here, the occupancy rate change. Cancellation rates, let's have a look here. So this one, it's, it's interesting to note that this represents anyone who canceled you or the guest. So I'm not able to use the C word as it's a bad word on YouTube and you could get whole in trouble. So I'll just say the date, it's May 27th, 2020. And um, you know what the world is dealing with right now. So that's why this number is high. Normally this number is gonna be about 5% over the year. All right, let's see length of stay. Same here, is it one listing or all of my listings? But, but length of stay is very important, especially as it relates to revenue management. You need to know when the average guest is booking. Here, let's say, uh, let's see if I wanted, wanted to see my competition apply and we'll say zero days. So I think maybe these are not yet regions. So these are regions that I host in and it looks like they had it no filled out or are these, okay, I know that I definitely have a one bedroom, one bed and one bath. Let's see what that looks like. Average length of stay, one day. So maybe we're doing, that's for my own listings, assuming I have a, a bunch of listings, which I don't. Let's go to nightly rate. 
zero nightly rate for this type of, so how did, how is my average stay one night, but my nightly rate is zero? Let's go, so 76, that seems about right for the past 30 days at least. It looks like, uh, ooh, my performance is lower. I'm charging less than my competition. So is it my true competition? If it is, that's a big, this is a red flag. This is a huge red flag. If this is my true competition, I'm charging 50 bucks less than similar areas. Wow, don't show my hosts that, right? But we gotta dig in. Who's Who are these um, listings? As I mentioned, I read it. They don't give much example. So here's the little kinks that, that need to be worked out. All right, if we go to earnings, let's check out earnings next. So these are earnings for 2020 expected. That's future payouts and 2020 details, nights booked, unbooked nights. Occupancy rate is 41%, but you remember we saw if my occupancy rate is actually 87% in the other tab. Let's take a look at progress. Progress is going to be uh, just a repeat of the prior performance module. It showed you where you were at, your super host status, etc. This is nice because it lets you select per listing. What listing are we looking at? You can see quite clearly. Here's my target to be a super host. Here's where I'm at. Here's my response rate. Here's where I'm at. Cancellations, acceptance rate. And then if you're not, they actually will give you action items. These are the things you can do to, to meet these requirements. For me, not applicable at the moment. Okay, quality, that's gonna be the rankings. So as we see here, I have 100% five-star ratings and my overall rating is 4.76. So already I'm thinking, well, what do you mean here? How can I, how can that be? Is the overall five stars? There's the overall and then there's the category rankings. Category, you can see here, accuracy, check-in, cleanliness, communication, location, value. So for the last 30 days, overall rating is 4.76. Okay, so if we go down here, similar listings, let's check it out. So it looks like maybe I got a review this day. So I, it was 100% review. So, and then the other ones are zero. So not really graphically, not, not the best presentation here. Not much information here. So let's see. Maybe this means the overall rating and this one is actually overall and category rankings. This one is what they're showing to people, to FPGs in the search is what they say. So let's, so accuracy. So one of these should be um, less than 100%. Accuracy is 100%. Check-in is 100%. Now this is a good opportunity for Airbnb to give some opportunities. Like, hey, your cleanliness is low. Well, cleanliness is an obvious one, but hey, your communication is low. Some direct things, you know, they wouldn't say sign up for message automation system, but they could give some really direct feedback in terms of when guests send the most messages, for example. Location, 100%, and value I know is 100%, but if all these are 100%, how am I at 4.76? Maybe it's that the 4.76 is measuring for the last year but they don't say that here and this is just the last 30 days um i'm unsure i'm unsure let's just have a look at last last year 80 percent five star ratings but the same thing here so my performance is pretty much in line with my competition and in line with myself last year so there you have it that is an overview of the airbnb i'll call it the airbnb performance dashboard and comment down below let me know and let airbnb know hey what can they add to make this even more useful this is clearly in the infancy so uh let's let's get on it let's let's make our voice known especially if they did see my last video and make some changes based on that they're watching the videos, your voice is heard. Let's make it happen. I already have some things. I'm gonna start it off with my own comment down below. See you in the comments section. Happy hosting.